Well, hi, boys and girls. It's so good to see you today. I'm so excited. I have some new friends I brought today for our reading time. Well, our book today that we're going to start with is Seven Froggies Went to School. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see what's happening with this. Seven froggies went to school down beside a rushing pool. Seven little coats of green, seven vests, all white and clean. We must be on time, said they. First we studied, then we played. This is how they do the rules. When we froggies go to school. Master Bullfrog, grave and stern, called the classes in their turn. From his seat upon a log, he taught the wisdom of the bog. So they get to do school outside. Some of you might be doing school outside with your computers right now. Froggies, hearken to my words. Stay away from cats and birds. Be aware the wily muskrats, ticks, and froggies run. You see that? They have to run if those things are coming. From boys with sticks, then all the froggies followed him. Oh my goodness. And quickly learned to dive and swim. So they had to learn how to dive and swim. Many of you might take swimming lessons this summer. We'll have to see. They learned to ride upon a newt. Look at that. They learned to dance and play the flute. <laughs> Froggy playing flute. That's funny. And when they were all done, they'd done their best. Master Bullfrog let them rest. Seven froggies grew up fast. Big frogs they became at last. Polished to a high degree to each froggy ought to be. Not one dunce among the lost, not one lesson they forgot. They headed, um, excuse me, they heeded Master Bullfrog's words regarding pussycats and birds. By heart they knew the muskrat tricks and how they ran. I didn't know frogs could run, but I guess they can. From boys with sticks, We've studied long and hard, they said, and come to school on time each day. Now they sit on other logs, teaching other little frogs. Wow, boys and girls, when we get done with things, we can teach our little brothers and sisters things. There's all sorts of things we can do. Well, our next book, one of my favorite stories. It's called Don't Rock the Boat. It's the story of the miraculous catch. We're going to see what that is. Peter and his friends had fished all night long, but they didn't catch a single fish. As they rowed their boats to shore, the colors of the morning sky danced on the water. But Peter, James, and John did not care about the sunrise. They were tired and grumpy. Can you guys make a grumpy face when you're tired? That's how they were. They were a little frustrated. They climbed out of the boats and tossed their nets into the water. It was time to wash the slippery, slimy seaweed out of their nets. Ooh, let's pretend like we're washing them. See if they come clean. Peter spread his nets on the sand and waited for them to dry. He was very unhappy. The, about not catching any fish. He always caught fish. Oh, so he was so disappointed with himself. Then Peter heard someone coming. He looked up. There was the Lord Jesus. Jesus asked Peter to take him for a ride in his boat, and Peter gladly did. Throw in your net, said Jesus. Well, Peter was surprised. We fished all night, he complained, and we didn't catch a thing, but, well, if you say so... And Peter obeyed. Would you like to pretend you are Peter throwing your net? Let's do that. Throw out our net. Let's see what we can catch. As soon as the net hit the water, it was filled with lots and lots of wiggly fish. Wow, boys and girls. 
Hurry, Peter yelled, bring the other boat. James and John jumped into the boat and rowed as fast as they could. Splish, splash, splish, splash, splish, splash. Peter and his friends tugged and tugged. Can you help pull in the nets? Help pull them in. Oh, these fish are so heavy, they laughed. Now they were so happy. The men pulled in so many fish that their boats could barely float. Sit very still so you don't rock your boat. Just sit really still. Peter and his friends rowed slowly back to shore. They had never had a catch like this before. Peter was amazed. Only God could have brought so many fish into the nets. It was wonderful to go fishing with Jesus. But Jesus told him there was something better than catching a lot of fish. I wonder what that would be, boys and girls. Follow me, Jesus said. I will make you fishers of men. Peter, James, and John left their nets and followed Jesus. We want to fish for, mat, for men. And snatch them out of sin. Clap, clap, clap. We'll talk of God's love and heaven above. We want to fish for men. So boys and girls, we that's one of our things is we are to go out and make disciples in the world. And we can fish for people too. And now we're going to talk about a funny one. The cat in the hat, the fish tail. Hello, I'm the fish. I had a quiet life. I swim in my bowl with my friend, Diver Dam, and play with a little red boat. I mind my own business, but one day that all changed. It was a rainy day. The kids were bored. Their mom was out and the babysitter was asleep. I was having a nice relaxing afternoon when suddenly something went bump. Oh no. Who should it be but a very big cat in a very big hat? He barged into our house and he picked me up in the air and he put me down, I said. Put me down, I said. You should not be here, I told him. You must go now. But the cat didn't care. He just dropped me, plop, into a teapot. Then he turned the couch into his own personal trampoline. How many of you guys have ever turned your couch into a trampoline? I'm sure a lot of you. Well, let's play. Let's have fun, said the cat in the hat. Let's make glop, loopy cupcakes with frosting galore. I tried to stop him, but soon frosting was flying all over the place. I shouted, this house must be clean for mother's party tonight. But nobody wanted to listen to me. Oh, no. The things went from bad to worse. The cat got a stain on mother's new dress. I do not like the way that you play, I told him. But the cat told me, don't worry, he said. Just how I know how to clean up the mess. Meet thing one and thing two, he said. I did not like the look of these things at all. Not one bit for a start. They played ball in the house and that is not allowed. I'm sure at your house, playing ball in the house is probably not allowed. Then I looked all around and said, where is our dog? What's become of poor Nevins? Don't fret, said Cat. I will find him. We'll use my super luxurious omnidirectional, whatchamacallit, it will do the trick, said the cat. Trust me, that's when I should have known we were in big trouble. And what happened while we were out looking for Nevins? The things went to dance class and took Sally's place. They went crash. They went smash. The whole ballet was a flop. Oh, no, all that hard work. In the end, we got Nevins back all right, but the house, what a mess. I shivered in fright. Your mother's on her way home. What will she, what will she do to us? What will she say? Have no fear, said the cat. They'll be right back. Soon the cat drove up in a jalopy contraption. True to his word, he started to clean. He picked up the plates and the books and the chair. He cleaned up the milk. He cleaned the dress. He cleaned the whole house. 
Then away he went saying, farewell fish. Now life's back to normal. I'm swimming my bowl with my friend, Diver Dan, and play with my little red boat. But things aren't quite the same. Things are, are a little, well, boring. I hope the cat in the hat comes back soon, but just for a visit. I know sometimes, boys and girls, we think life can be boring. But you know what? We can always make fun things to do at home. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.